Hi everyone. The first problem that we're going to discuss today is uh, question 10 from the May 2015 paper and uh, uh, it's a problem about uh, scattering. So um, it consists of four parts. Uh, um, so let's look uh, at part A first. So we want to find the general solution of the Schrodinger equation, the time independent Schrodinger equation uh, with energy E on a potential V of X, which is A squared, uh, a positive constant times theta of x, uh, where theta is the unit step function, which is one for positive x and zero for negative x. So we want to find the general solution of, of this equation when uh, the energy is larger than a squared, uh, which is larger than zero, assuming that both the wave function and its first derivative are everywhere continuous. So let's have a look at this part. So let me first draw the potential as a function of x. Potential is zero when x uh, is negative and is equal to say a squared where x is positive. So in blue, I have the potential. And the energy is larger than zero and of a squared. So uh, it's always uh, higher than the potential. So this would be the energy. So since the potential is constant for x uh, uh, negative and for x positive, in fact, uh, it's a piecewise constant, as you can see, it's easy to solve uh, uh, the Schrodinger equation by considering uh, the two cases where x is uh, negative and where x uh, is positive. So we have solved uh, Schrodinger equation with the constant or zero potential before. So we just have to repeat the exercise. So let's solve the Schrodinger equation first for negative x where the potential is zero. So the Schrodinger equation is minus psi double prime is equal to E psi. And let's set the energy to be equal to K squared psi. So we take uh, K equal to the square root of the energy. So this is a real number because the energy is positive. And let's take it uh, uh, the positive root for definiteness. So then uh, we can solve psi of x will be equal to a function which I will call psi minus of x, uh, which is given by a linear superposition of two plane waves with wave numbers k and minus k. So have a e to the i k x plus b e to the minus i k x, where the coefficients a and b uh, depend on k, but will not indicate this in the notation. Similarly, for x positive, the potential is not equal to zero, but it's constant. So we can rewrite the Schrodinger equation as minus psi double prime equal to e minus the potential, which is a squared times psi. And we know that e minus a squared uh, is positive, so uh, let's set that to be equal to p squared psi, where p is equal to square root of uh, e minus a squared. So e minus a squared uh, is positive, so p is a real number, and once again, we'll take uh, p to be positive uh, without loss of generality, as we did for k above. Of course, p and k uh, are related, but uh, let me use this notation. The solution for positive x is a function psi plus of x, which is again a linear superposition of uh, uh, plane waves, but now with wave numbers uh, p and minus p. So we get c e to the i p x plus d e to the minus i p x. So to summarize a wave function uh, psi, of x is equal to a e to the i k x plus b e to the minus i k x when x is negative and it's equal to c e to the i p x plus d e to the minus i p x when x is positive. Next we have to impose matching conditions um, at x equals zero where the potential is discontinuous and we are told uh, uh, that uh, um, the wave function and its first derivative are everywhere continuous. And I remind you that this is always the case uh, um, whenever the potential does not include any delta function. 
So uh, let's in, uh, impose matching conditions and those will uh, determine two relations among the four coefficients, A, B, C, and D. So we'll find the general solution of a second order differential equation, which depends on just two integration constants. Let's write down now the matching conditions. So the first matching condition is, uh, uh, say, the continuity of the wave function. So let's write uh, uh, psi minus at zero uh, from negative values has to be the same as psi plus at zero from positive values. So um, if I look at the solutions above psi minus and psi plus, this means that a plus b is equal to c plus d. Let's call this equation one. And then uh, um, we also have to set the uh, first derivatives to be equal at zero. Um, and the equation that we get is ik times a minus b is equal to ip times c minus d. Let me call that equation two. So we have to solve this system of equations. So, uh, let's do that and solve for C and D. To solve for C, we can take uh, equation one and then uh, add to it equation two divided by IP. Then we'll get uh, two times C on the right hand side. So let's also divide by two. So when we do that, uh, um, so we get C on the right hand side and D drops out. And on the left hand side, we get one half uh, uh, one plus K over P times A plus one half one minus K over P times B. And instead to extract D, we take uh, uh, the linear combination with a, a minus sign in the middle. And from that we get that D is one half times one minus K over P A plus one half times one plus K over P B. So this determines uh, C and D in terms of A and B, which are the only free integration constants. In part B, we're interested in uh, scattering solutions, uh, but uh, because the potential does not vanish at x uh, going to plus infinity, which is uh, the case that we normally studied, uh, the momentum of the transmitted particle, uh, uh, which is equal to p, is different from that of the incoming and reflected particles, which is equal to k. So because of that, we're told that we have to carefully normalize the contributions from uh, incoming, reflected, and transmitted particle with a, a factor of one over square root of the wave number um, in front for each. And for instance, as x goes to minus infinity, the incoming particles from the left are normalized as one over root k e to the i k x. So we want to use this information to determine the reflection and transmission coefficients t. So um, let me unpack a little bit what we have to do to um, normalize uh, things appropriately. So um, what we're instructed to do is to normalize by uh, including a factor of one over square root of the wave number in front. So in particular, for scattering solution, uh, we need the psi over x to go like uh, now one over root k e to the i k x plus the reflection coefficient r divided by root k e to the minus i k x. Uh, as x goes to minus infinity. So this is the uh, normal um, uh, normalization, but now uh, divided by square root of k, as we're instructed to do. And for uh, uh, x going to plus infinity, normally we would just write a transmission coefficient t times uh, um, the wave moving to plus infinity, but now the wave number there is p, so we have e to the i p x, 
And then we have again to normalize by one over square root of uh, the wave number, which now is P uh, rather than K. So this is a scattering solution uh, that we, the normalized scattering solution that we want to obtain. In terms of the constants A, B, C, and D, so we need to set A to be equal to one over root K, B to be equal to R over root K, C to be equal to T over root P, and D to be equal to zero. Okay, so this I'll obtain by comparing uh, these two expression for Psi. Okay, so we have uh, the system here that determines C and D in terms of A and B. So let's plug uh, in uh, these expressions for A, B, C, and D to determine the reflection coefficient R and the transmission coefficient T. So it's easier to first impose that T is equal to zero. So when D is equal to zero, uh, that means that uh, I can look at the uh, right hand side of D equal to zero, I'll multiply by two times P. So we'll get uh, uh, zero is equal to P minus K times A plus P plus K times B, uh, which allows us to determine B over A, which in turn is equal to the reflection coefficient as we've seen on these two expressions here. So B over A equal to minus P minus K over P plus K, or alternatively K minus P over K plus P. Okay, so we've determined the reflection coefficient R. So now to determine the transmission coefficient, we can see that uh, T is equal to square root of P times C. And C is given by the expression up here. So let me take out uh, a factor of one over two P, uh, which when I simplify with the square root of P gives me one over two square root of P. And then we get uh, uh, P plus K um, times A plus P minus K times B. So let me also take out uh, uh, A. So I get one over two P square root of K. So um, this is what I get. Okay, now let's plug in uh, the uh, expression above for B over A. So we have one over two root P K times P plus K plus, in the numerator we have P plus K times K minus P. So let me write this as minus uh, P minus K squared. And in the denominator we have P plus K. So I can, uh, factor out one over p plus k so i get one over two root p k times p plus k so now the quantity in bracket becomes uh, p plus k squared minus p minus k squared so um when you subtract the two squares, only the cross terms remain and we get four times P plus K. So um, when I simplify, I get uh, two root of P K over P plus K. So this is the transmission coefficient. So next in part C, we want to show that uh, the transmission coefficient and the reflection coefficients, which we just computed uh, and which were defined uh, with this uh, perhaps unusual normalization that we discussed earlier, obey the usual uh, relation that uh, um, the sum of their absolute value squared is equal to one, which uh, uh, as usual is interpreted as conservation of probability. So let's check that. That should also motivate why we uh, took uh, that perhaps unusual normalization. So let's compute T squared in absolute values plus R squared. So everything here is real, uh, so we don't really need to worry about absolute value. So for T squared, we get 4 PK over P plus K squared. And for uh, uh, R squared, we get K minus P squared over K plus P or P plus K squared. Let's factor 
uh, p, 1 over p plus k squared. And then in the numerator, we get 4pk plus k squared minus 2kp plus p squared, which is equal to uh, k squared plus 2kp plus p squared over p plus k squared. And we see that uh, if we expand the, the square, numerator and denominator are the same. And so we get that uh, the square of um, the transmission coefficient plus the square of the reflection coefficient is equal to 1. Finally, in part T, we need to discuss and draw the form of the eigenfunction psi of x when a squared is greater than e, which is greater than 0. So I've uh, written here the general solution and the uh, relation with, between the coefficients that we obtained uh, in part B. But now we want to consider a situation where the energy is less than the potential when x is positive. So uh, the situation that we have now is as follows. I'm gonna draw again the potential in blue. So that's zero when uh, x is uh, negative and is equal to a squared when x is positive. So that was b of x. But the energy now is less than the value of the potential when x is positive. So it will be somewhere here. So now e minus a squared, which we call p squared is negative. So p is uh, purely imaginary. We're going to set p to be equal to i mu, where mu is real, but again, without loss of generality, we can set uh, mu to be positive. Uh, and k instead is still real because k is a square root of the energy, which is positive. So let's substitute p equal i mu in the general solution for the wave function psi of x. So for x negative, we still get a e to the i k x plus b to the minus i k x. Whereas for x positive, we get c e to the i p x, which becomes e to the minus mu x plus d e to the minus ipx, which becomes d e to the mu x. And uh, uh, we also need to substitute p equal to i mu in a matching condition. So we get that c is a half uh, one plus k over i mu times a plus one half one minus k over i mu times p and d is uh, one half one minus k over i mu times a plus one half one plus k over i mu times b. So now uh, because we have this real exponentials uh, when x is positive we find that the solution psi over x is bounded uh, if and only if d vanishes because the exponential of mu x uh, increases uh, and grows to plus infinity when x goes to plus infinity. So let's set d equal to zero. The solution is bounded if and only if uh, d is equal to zero. Uh, in which case we can find an expression for b over a, uh, which is uh, k minus i mu over k plus i mu. We can also obtain uh, this expression by taking uh, the expression that we obtained in uh, uh, part b and uh, setting uh, p equal to i mu. If we want to determine all the coefficients, let's say that uh, uh, we take the incoming waves to be normalized.
as in part B, and we need again to set uh, a equal to one over square root of k as we were instructed uh, in part B. And then if we plug it uh, in the other equations, we can determine uh, uh, B and C. So in particular, B is equal to k plus, sorry, k minus i mu over k plus i mu times A, which is one over square root of k. And C can also be determined. Uh, let's not do the exercise again. We can borrow the result of uh, part B, uh, which determined T, which was square root of P times C here. So if I divide by square root uh, of P, uh, we get two root K over P plus K. So going back, we get that C is equal to two root K over K plus P and P is equal to I mu. So this is the expression that we get for C, and of course, D is equal to zero. Anyway, regardless of this normalization, um, the wave function psi of x looks qualitatively as follows. So when x is positive, we get, uh, so the term uh, d e to the mu x uh, has been removed to ensure that the solution is bounded. So we get an exponential that decreases to zero. Whereas when X is negative, we get a, a sum of two oscillatory terms. So the wave function will look something like this. So this is oscillatory and this is a damped exponential. <laughs> 